Everyone, Cody from Mac Telecom Networks. Five hours ago, Ubiquity released Unify OS Dream Machines 1.11.4. This includes updates for Unify Network 7.0.23, Unify Protect 1.21.1, Unify Talk 1.14.2. But there is a new Unify Talk firmware available, and we'll talk about that and Unify Access 1.3.37. We'll talk about some of the changes in Dream Machine 1.11.4 and Unify Network 7.0.23. I did a video before on 7.0.20 and a lot of new features that is in the new Unify Network controller was brought over from 7.0.20. If you're new here, please hit the subscribe button. Make sure to hit the bell icon. If you'd like to hire me for network consulting, visit www.mactelecomnetworks.com. You'd find us on Instagram at Mac Telecom Network, and we have a Discord server, and I'll put a link in the description below. To start off, this release is a rolling release, so not everybody is going to see it visible in their Unify network controller. Looking at my network controller, we could see that the Unify OS version is 1.11.0 and it's not asking me to update. So I'm gonna push the update out through an SSH session and I'll show you how to do that. To upgrade through the SSH session, we need to turn SSH on on our UDM Pro. So we'll go under advanced and then we'll turn SSH on. We need to create a password for SSH and then we'll go to a command line, type in SSH root at the IP address of our UDM Pro. Now it says, are you sure you want to continue connecting? I'll type yes. And then we'll put in that SSH password. Okay, now we're into our Unified Dream Machine Pro. We need to type in ubnt-upgrade and then the path of the new firmware upgrade. So you could go to the Ubiquity downloads and we could see here Unify OS Dream Machine Pro 1.11.4. I'll click on the firmware and then we'll click download. I'll accept to the terms and then we'll copy the URL. We'll go back to our command line and then I'll just paste that in and press enter. And we can see that it's getting the firmware, so we'll let this do its thing. Now the update is pushed through and we can see that my Unify OS version is 1.11.4. The network controller is at 7.0.23, which I already have my network controller at that version. We could see Unify Access at 1.3.37. And then I pushed an update out to Unify Talk earlier today and it's at 1.14.4. Unify Talk within the Dream Machine update only comes to 1.14.2 and we'll look at the newer update. So let's take a look at some of the improvements with the Dream Machine's 1.11.4. So we have improved the offline setup, improved push notification stability, improve establishing a remote connection, and then it improves internet connectivity check. It also upgraded Sericata to 5.0.8 and it does minor LCM fixes and improvements. And let's look at the bug fixes. The first one is fix release candidates releases appearing in the official release channel. So if you noticed and upgraded to 7.0.20, it was a release candidate. It wasn't a full release. 7.0.23 is the full release. It fixes a kernel crash issue, fix issues where content filtering may not work as expected, fix system lookups when DNS is resolving to 0.0.0. .0. It fixes an issue with high CPU usage, crashing on consoles with lots of users, and it fixes a bug issue that doesn't allow transfer ownership to deactivated accounts. For the update in Unify Access, there really isn't too much. It just is security enhancements and text UX improvements. It also fix an issue when doorbells are answered from one device, the other admin device is still ringing. And this is the newest Unify Talk application 1.14.4. In the Dream Machine release, it only does the Unify Talk 1.14.2. I'm not going to go over the Unify Talk stuff as I'm going to do another video about Unify Talk and we'll go over some of these settings. Now looking at the Unify Network application 7.0.23, we could see below that you could find all the other channel releases previous to this in the release change notes. If we take a look at 7.0.20, this was the big release that was being pushed out to people even when it was in release candidate. And I've already done a video on this. And we could see that there's a ton of different changes, which I'm not gonna go through, but we'll go into my UDM and look at the UI and we'll look at some of the new improvements. And this is the new UI for 7.0.23. In the middle, we could see a traffic overview, which just tells us traffic stats. And then we have a client device type. So what's using Linux, Windows, and other. We also have this Wi-Fi clients below. So we could see on the 2.4 gigahertz, what's using Wi-Fi 4, 5, and 6. And the same goes for the 5 gigahertz. If we look to the left, we could see down utilization and up utilization, which is supposed to be real time. And then we could see our active clients. We could see the total amount of access points. And we could change between 2.4 
and 5 gigahertz. For this page, we could also add a white theme. So if we want to change it from dark mode to light mode, we could do that by going into the settings and then clicking on system and then going to light mode and then press apply changes. Now we can see it's in light mode. I'm going to bring it back to the dark mode because it's easier on my eyes. Now there's a few new things for the network. We could pause the network completely so no traffic would be going out of it. And Tom from Lawrence Systems did a full review of 7.0.23 and I suggest you checking it out. But that was one of the things that he mentioned. Also, something new for each one of our networks, automatically it enables multicast DNS. And this will allow us to cast between networks. And another big thing that was missing from the previous versions was device disconnect notifications. They did have it before, they took it away, and now they've re-added it. So we could see under system and then network notifications that we have unified device connections. A unified device has disconnected or reconnected. So we could either have that push out or we could have it email us. Another thing that was added is multi-factor authentication support. And this isn't done in Unify, but it is tied to your Ubiquiti account. So we need to go to account.ui.com. And from account.ui.com, we need to go to security. Now under security, we could see multi-factor authentication. We could add a new method. We could have email authentication. And coming soon, we have UI verify and SMS. For our Wi-Fi, we could also pause it if we want. Under our traffic management, we could do different actions. So we could permit or prohibit us from going to certain sites or applications like Facebook. And I may do a full video just on that. Let me know if you'd like to see it. For our firewall rules, we could also pause the rules or we could restart them. That I really like. The networks and the Wi-Fi networks pausing, I don't really think is a good idea because we could accidentally hit them off and have people screaming at us that their network is down. Now under traffic inspector, we could filter out which clients we want to see. Right now we're using all of my clients, so 29, but we could filter it down to the client. So we could say this desktop machine, and then it's going to show us our activity and the threats that are on that machine. We could also look at our threat map. One thing that was taken out of the threat map that I don't like is when we click on a country, we can't block it from here anymore. We have to go into our threat management to do that. Before it was really easy just being able to click on a country and pressing block. So I hope they add that back in the future. One thing that was missing from the new UI before was being able to power cycle the ports directly from the user interface. But now we could click on ports, we could go to one of our PoE devices, and then we could see port power cycle, which is great. One thing that I do hope they add though is our ability to select multiple ports. I don't see it right now. If you know of a way to, let me know. All in all, I think Ubiquity is doing a great job with updates and they keep constantly improving the routing functions. I know a lot of people aren't fans of the UDM or the UDM Pro or SE, but I am. There are still a lot of things to improve on, but they keep doing better and better. And now the addition of UID, this is going to be great for businesses. Let me know what you think about the new improvements of 7.0.23 in the comments below. If you like this video, hit the thumbs up button. If you're new here, please subscribe and hit the bell icon. All right, thanks.